Hey there. I hope that you will. I've come back quite relaxed from my holidays and right now here in Vienna we're having a really beautiful autumn weather. The leaves are starting to turn. It's been a little rainy so everything looks quite lush and the temperatures are at a um, I think very comfortable range. <laughs> Obviously I prefer the weather to be a bit colder so I'm quite happy at the moment. And I thought what we could do today is to explore sort of the changing of the season through the works of Edward Munch, the famous Norwegian painter where you're surely familiar with some of his work. I saw the Munch Museum in Oslo earlier this year, which kind of infatuated me with his work. And at the same time, in the spring, we also had a special exhibition here in Vienna. It's called Edward Munch im Dialog, in Dialogue, which was shown in the Albertina. So that's the catalogue for that exhibition and I thought we could use it to look through and follow some of the seasons. But before we get into that, I just briefly want to show you the most famous painting. Just in case you can't quite place Edward Munch right now. You have definitely seen the screen. His most favourite painting which is from 1893 and if you haven't seen it in this particular version then you've probably seen it in one of the versions by Andy Warhol or you are familiar with this shape through the mask from the movies from the 90s screen which I watched last year in autumn and I was actually surprised I quite like them or you might know the version with Bart Simpson so <laughs> it's really quite everywhere and one thing that I found quite interesting about the scream is that it had a huge impact at the time. It was really a strange piece of art, one that was really unsettling. What we see here is the Oslo Fjord and the entire distance is kind of distorted. Everything moves around the scream of the person shown here. And here in this book that I'm reading at the moment by Carlo Wegnausgaard, there's an interesting uh, quote about the scream. So it says here, the scream is perhaps the most iconic image of our time. And this means that the picture has invariably already been seen so it is no longer possible to see it as if for the first time. And since so much of what Munch invested in this painting had to do precisely with alienation, with seeing the world as if for the first time by creating a distance of non-familiarity, it is clear that the scream is, in a sense, ruined for us as a work of art. But Munch as an artist is not ruined. His production was so huge and so little of it has been exhibited that it's still possible to approach his pictures with fresh eyes. And he refers especially to the paintings that sort of do not date from that period of the 1890s when the screen was painted and that often are a little harder to interpret, he writes, because 
he just shows us what he sees and there's not really much symbolism going on and I think we're going to see some of them today and I just want to start off by saying that for me Munch was not an easy artist to approach so until this year I can't say that I was a fan I just thought a lot of it was strange and the first paintings that I saw here in the exhibition in Vienna these were positioned in the first two rooms these were the ones that I could connect to this one is simply called Waves and this one is a seascape in Warnemünde and I like these different colors the blues and the greens and you can see the foam on the waves here And of course, it's not quite the same as seeing them in print as opposed to seeing them beautifully lit with the vibrancy of the colors in a museum. But they reminded me a little of one of my favorite paintings by Gustav Klimt, which is just the water of the Attersee of a lake in Upper Austria. So there was a way for me to connect with these paintings, something I knew and something I could compare them to in a way. There was an emotion that was already present that I could connect it to. And it's like a variation on a theme that I enjoy through different eyes painted by a different person and of course I think these pictures of summer are always a little easier to approach there's also this painting here of the beach now I don't know if this was meant to be a painting of summer obviously in Norway the beach is everywhere here in Austria you have to drive for a little bit before you can see a beach and it's usually during the location but the reason I associate this one with summer is that there is a version of this painting in a collection in Bergen and it was exhibited in London while I was there unfortunately I didn't get a ticket but I did get a print of the beach and another one of a painting that is titled Summer Night where you can see one lonesome figure sitting here on a stone dressed in white looking out across the water and there's something a little melancholic in her gaze and I think it's apparent here too these colors are beautiful and bright the blues, whites a little pink and yellow but here it's like there's something dark moving in across the sky in the background the meadows the trees maybe it's already the night 
breathe them back in. And I find that an interesting combination. That you can show something that's a little uncanny in a way. Something that's a bit strange. And still have these beautiful bright colors. doesn't have to be all dark. And before we move on to the next one, I think that's a good point to read another quote from this book. Right here at the start. Because this author had an interesting reaction to a painting by Monk as well. This one here, the cabbage field. He writes, Sometimes it is impossible to say why and how a work of art achieves its effect. I can stand in front of a painting and become filled with emotions and thoughts evidently transmitted by the painting, and yet it is impossible to trace those emotions and thoughts back to it and say, for example, that the sorrow came from the colors, or that the longing came from the brush strokes, or that the sudden insight that life will end lay in the motive. One picture I feel this way about was painted by Edward Munch in 1915. It depicts a cabbage field. The cabbages in the foreground are roughly executed, almost sketch-like, dissolving into green and blue brush strokes deeper into the background. Next to the cabbage field, there's an area of yellow, over that an area of dark green, and over that, again, a narrow band of darkening sky. That is all, that is the whole painting. But the picture is magical. It is so charged with meaning. Looking at it, I feel as if something is bursting within me. And yet it is just a field of cabbages. So what is going on with this painting? When I look at its colors and shapes, which are so radically simplified that they suggest the landscape more than they represent it, I see death as if the painting intended a reconciliation with death, but a trace of something terrible remains, and what is terrible is the unknown, that we don't know what awaits us. But Monk's painting doesn't really say anything. It doesn't give form to anything other than cabbages, grain, trees, and sky, and yet death, and yet reconciliation, and yet peace, and yet a trace of something terrible. Is it simply that the line of the field leads inwards towards darkness and that dusk is descending in the sky above? Perhaps. But many have painted fields, many have painted dusk, without attaining what this painting so calmly radiates. And he continues down here. The visible world is not objective reality. It appears to each individual as seen by them. A monk's great gift lay in his ability to paint not only what his gaze took in, but also what that gaze was charged with. There's a longing in this painting of the cabbage field. A longing to disappear and become one with the world and their longing to disappear and become one with the world fulfilled the painting for him. It fulfilled for him the act of painting. That's why this painting's so good. What disappears re-emerges in what comes into being. And if that disappearance ceased for the painter as soon as he finished the painting, it is still represented in the picture 
which fills us again and again with its emptiness. Cabbages, grain and forest, yellow and green, blue and orange. I really like this book. I like how he describes things that I find often quite difficult to put into words. Looking at a painting after all is something that is very personal and like he writes, it's often just an emotion that comes up. Something that you see that you might have seen before in a very different circumstance. Something you can connect it to. And in these paintings that I really like, there aren't always people. But where they are, they seem a little distant to one another. This one's called Two Human Beings, The Lonely Ones. And it's not the same that I have at home as print on my wall. But a little of the same emotions present. That one person in white looking out across the water towards the horizon. And that other person seems to be standing back just a little. And we don't know, is he looking at her or out towards the water as well? So there too is that longing that Knausgaard mentioned. But we want to explore the seasons, right? And the way that the seasons make us feel. Here's a storm coming in. We have the red roof and the house painted in pink. We have the trees that already seem to be shaking. In the wind and these wild clouds darkening and filling the sky but that too still summer. And like I said, here in Vienna, we've already moved on a little bit. The seasons have changed and it's not stormy anymore. It's mostly been raining. This here is not quite a modern street. There would be more lights everywhere. Along the facades, in the streets of traffic. But nonetheless it Feels familiar. I love the way that the colors here kind of remind me of the painting of the waves that we saw at the start. The blue and white and a little green. I 
don't think that these rainy autumn days necessarily look washed out even if they're dark and yes, maybe a little grey the colours that you do have often seem brighter there's something inviting in the lights and there's such a dark and rainy day and that's the concept of hygge, isn't it? that we looked at a while ago I don't know if it's fair to compare Munch to uh, hygge or call his art hygge league but something a little dark doesn't necessarily mean that all of it is dark there can be colors in it and there can be something that resonates very much on a level that feels familiar if we leave the city maybe take a walk through the forest we might find even brighter colors this is the elm forest in autumn in bright yellow and the trees are blue and shade of red and purple and what I like very much about some of Munch's depictions of forests is that he inserted something that feels strange and distant like if you walk in there you don't quite know what you might find there down the path like you're entering some other realm there was a painting in the museum in Oslo where that feeling was quite strong looking at it but we can also just enjoy this bright image of autumn and once autumn progresses a little further and these colors too disappear we can find them somewhere else they can still prevail like here in this painting called the yellow log and again this is an example where a print I think can never quite do it justice This log here in the middle looks so bright when you see the actual painting and here you already have snow lying on the ground and you have a deep dark winter sky above I don't know if there is anything that I could really read into the painting I don't know what could be said about it in terms of symbols or what it means 
maybe that was just his expression to recreate how he saw the world maybe he took a stroll through this forest and loved the colors and he allows us to share in that experience But of course, Munch is known for some paintings that take a bit of a darker turn. And October definitely is the perfect time to explore that. There's this one, for example, called Moonlight. Munch did experiment with his materials, with his art styles and this is an example where you can see the wood that he created his art on you can see the patterns like here, across the woman's face here and here we see a person directly facing us and that is something that appears quite often in Monk's art a woman that seems to be looking we don't know directly at him, directly at us. Almost like a challenge. She's a little intimidating, I think. Not smiling, just looking right ahead. Looks like there is a shadow behind her, but maybe I'm not reading that as it was intended. Here's a window set in what seems to be a wooden cabin. The glass is dark. And here on the side, some plant is growing upwards. In dark. We might look at this one here Cold Attraction In black and white Again, we're by the sea The beach there in the background A rock Something that looks like Odd cloud formations out in the distance Or it could be we're on the bridge of the screen Two people facing one another Dark shadows for eyes And her hair seems to be moving in the wind To 
towards him. And if you followed me for a while, you know that I'm quite fond of some Norwegian music. Some black metal where it was common to paint your face. With some patterns in black and white and I can see why black metal musicians often reference Munch. I don't think they draw the inspiration for their face paint for him but there's something about the way that these paintings feel. The emotion seems familiar. For me, this very much looks like November, but November too is going to pass and we will get to winter and of course up north winters are a lot darker than they are here the nights last much longer. We see a snowy landscape. And the sky that is not quite light, but also not entirely dark. And here we look through the window and see some light inside. These two are painted from the same spot. You can see the light here again. And this is the same cabin in the distance in red. That's the one over here. We even see the window in the same spot. This one's called On the Veranda Stairs. So that would be here. And on this side. The stairs are outside the frame. And again, we have a woman here facing us, looking right at us in what I think must be a warm coat and dark blue down to the stairs with a warm collar here. And again, we don't quite know what she's thinking. But that's a bit of loneliness that Monk showed in his painting. I do like this though, even if it's a little bit creepy. And I want to end this exploration of winter with one of my favorite paintings by him. I'm gonna think this is a bit odd, but I find it really quite funny. It's this one here. It's called The Sleepwalker. I think it's a self-portrait <laughs> and 
and you can see I imagine this is Edward Munk who was woken up in the middle of the night by a sound somewhere in his house and he put on his coat he put on his slippers and he's shuffling through the corridor trying to check whether everything's okay and where that sound is coming from that disturbed his sleep and I imagine it was just a cat jumping up somewhere knocking something over and he'll just be shuffling right back to bed once he's seen that everything's in order but there's just something about the way that he leans into the frame something about that overly grumpy expression that I just find really funny I think he knows what he painted there and he did have a reputation of being a bit of a strange person a bit of a loner maybe a reputation of being a bit grumpy and maybe he just thought to play with it and let it appear in his work but beyond that again we have this gorgeous blue night outside the window the light in here in this warm coat the piano here on the side something to entertain us through the dark season I don't know how you feel about autumn I really like this season but nonetheless I always find the end of summer a bit difficult but I think it's just a matter of adjusting and getting used to it again and then finding the beauty in these long nights in the brightness of the snow and also in some of the strangeness that this season brings and I happen to say that another Monk exhibition has just opened in Paris so for me the cold season is also going to bring a little trip to Paris I think and I'm very curious to see which paintings they'll exhibit there for now I hope you enjoyed this I hope you're feeling sleepy and I will see you again on Sunday with a German version of this video until then